G'day, fellas, and welcome to Beyond All Reason. We're here watching a game that I have just played, and I want to tell you a story. It's the story of a single marauder about how one marauder can cause so much devastation to the enemy team. So, this is an 8v8 game that's on all that glitters. I've made my map, my mini map, a little bit bigger for you guys, so you're more easily able to see it. I'm not going to introduce all the players because I tell you what, I just I just tried starting off the uh, the last cast that I did introducing everybody. It took me like 12 minutes just to introduce everybody. So let's tell you a little bit about what is happening. So this is a game I just played. I didn't record the game uh, from my own perspective and talk over the top of it because I'll be honest with you, I'm not yet at that level where I can even really think about things other than the game when I'm playing it. I'm still really learning this game. Uh, but, of course, we've got our favorite backline position. I love this position here because it gives you that central access to the rocks. Uh, this, this spot over here is also a really nice spot as well and gives you a lot more space. I always find whenever I'm playing in this position, uh, the, the main issue I've got is, is the, these, the player that always spawns here doesn't want to use this back area that they've, that they've got. Uh, and subsequently, it's like, oh, well, we're going to expand over here. So it, it, it's one of those things where you've got to be careful about the, the, the way that you expand. Maybe that's something that I can look into. But anyway, let's let's take a little bit of a look here at our front line. So we've got Disco Wizard on the front line. We've got Mana Pot Amoose on the front line. And we've got Alej and Caustic22 on the front line. Friendly Player, Dr. Cheesecake, and The Kingdom. And of course, myself on the back line. Now, I'm going to be looking to do big eco stuff. You know I love big eco stuff. But my, my caveat here is that, well, I like to also go for my win condition. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And this game, I'm going to show you where it doesn't look like it works, but then it actually does. So, starting off out the, the normal way that we do, juggling our energy, trying our best to spend all of our energy as, as much as we can. That wasn't actually my my, uh, my my perspective, but now we fix that up so you're going to be able to see it. Uh, and you can actually see they're even saying, don't, <laughs> Black King saying, don't be the embarrassment of YouTube. <laughs> Oh yes, it, it's it's gotten to that point now where where a lot of people are, are recognizing uh, me and and my names now that I'm I'm putting out content. Uh, Choice even saying in that find Drongo, I bully him. I, it will be remembered. Choice, it will be remembered. Now keep in mind that's all team chat, so they don't actually. Or we didn't we didn't see any of this. So let's take a look over at the enemy side. So we've got Choice, uh, who's going to be the point leader at the moment. He is TS30, so a pretty good player. Going to be playing front line here. Uh, we've got Bry. We've also got False Seven Nine Eight. Master Toby, and on the back line, we've got Idiot, good name. Uh, we've got Black King 999. We've got Ring Blades in the eco, and Strata also in the eco spot here. So, going to be going for some big economic plays down here on this south side, and I'm going to be trying my best to outboom them any possible way I can. There's a little bit of a scuffle coming through on the back side. It looks like uh, I, there was a couple of... Uh, I, I used to call them Jeffies, uh, but in, in this game, uh, in... Uh, in uh, beyond all reason, they are called, these ones right here, Rascals. Uh, so that, that was back in Total Annihilation, that's what we called it. So let's talk a little bit about what, what are our goals in the early game here, because you might be watching this, you might be experienced, uh, and you might be familiar with absolutely everything I'm talking about, because at, at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm a relatively new player to Beyond All Reason. As I said, as I've, as I've mentioned many a time before, I played a lot of Total Annihilation when I was younger. I'm not kidding you. I would have spent more than 10,000 hours playing that game with my dad. Best time of my life. And part of the reason why I love this game so much is because it really hits that nostalgia spot. So, what's the goal here? The goal is to get to the front line as quickly as possible. You can see how Choice has done this. Doesn't even stop to make the mexes. That's okay because he'll fill them in with his back line, uh, with his, uh, his follow-up bots. And he gets here and he looks to begin making lasers as, as close up as he possibly can. And ideally, that's what we want to be doing across the board here. And we want to make sure that there are no gaps. That's the roles of the front line. Um, and when it comes to the back line, you've... As always, you've got different roles. So somebody needs to be going air. And he, here's me drawing out the the battle battle grid because he, he, my uh, my nearest ally has decided he's, he's going to start expanding straight over here. I mean, to be fair, he doesn't really have a whole lot of space, does he? Uh, it's kind of greedy. Like when you look at this, so I, I guess the kingdom is kind of like expanding. You, you can kind of, you, you are happy to take that. So you know what? Maybe I should start expanding out this way because this is a, a common issue that I run into. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to think about that more. Anyway, uh, we've got our, our first front lines beginning to collide, and we've got a bit of a, a, a tough matchup here, right? So we've got the highest rating player on the enemy team going up against the lowest rating player on our team. So you would expect that this will fall very, very quickly. Uh, but Caustic, he is going to be looking to try and hold on. He got out here pretty quickly as well and left the mechs behind. I'm curious if friendly players is going to come up and look to take them. Normally, you just take your own mechs. You, you've got six mechs that you play with on the back line. The, your three starting mechs and your three mechs 
metal extractors. Um, and, uh, I mean, there are different play styles. I, I've seen many people from the back line look to bring their comm up uh, to the front. That, that's, that's quite common. Uh, so by no means is, is that uh, something that people don't do. But we already see a little bit of action over on this east side of the map here. Two commanders out for the north team. Going to be looking to hold it down a little bit longer up against the vehicles. And we hear the first commanders going down. Obviously, mine's already gone out. He's already had his metal sucked out of him. Now we've got another one coming down now. We've hit T2. We've got our our bot out already. And he's going to be looking to throw down throwing down some advanced metal extractors. We're, we're, we're just doing all of, all of our normal things if, if you haven't seen the build order already just check the channel it's like the the second or third video back something like that uh, it's, it's not too long ago it'll it'll explain how to do this i'm still using the exact same build order. it might be a little bit different but you know sometimes you wing it sometimes you follow the follow it to the t but anyway let's let's check in over on the other side and see how they're going so we've got t2 coming through for strata we've got t2 coming through for ring blades no t2 coming through for black king yet but he is making a lot of aircraft take a look at this and something that you always want to have on your team is you want to have a backliner going aircraft if you're not going air and the enemy is it's going to give them a huge advantage because they can essentially just come through bypass all of your frontline defense and normally they like to come around the edges of the map like this where it's really hard to hit them normally you've got all your defenses sitting up here towards the front you come in around the back and then boom across now one of the things i've called out is fill the gap uh, that we, we're not kind of filling the gap. If you take a look here from the view, you can see that it's it's quite open. It's almost like uh, Alej has left this space for me to come down. So uh, obviously I, I have have not taken the uh, the liberty of doing that. So I've said, you know, feel free to take it. Please please feel free to take it and, and make sure nothing's coming through there. So anyway, back on the, the uh, north side, we're throwing down our uh, advanced metal extractors and everything is going well. We're about to throw down our fusion uh, very, very soon. Uh, I don't think the timing here is anything to be proud. I say anything to be proud of. That I, I guess that's by my standards. It's still pretty quick. Uh, the fusion timing is, is pretty good. Uh, I think our Aphis is, is a sub-12 minute. And any, any game that's sub-12 minutes, I'm happy with that. I think that's pretty reasonable. But let's uh, let's let's take a look. I, I, I still am not 100% used to how to scroll on this game as well. So I'm, I'm always willing to take feedback. If you've got any for me, please feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Let me know. Hey, Drongo, you know, you're, you're scrolling too much. You're scrolling too fast. You're zooming too fast, whatever it is. Because uh, I, I am trying to work it out. Obviously, it's different from Age of Empires 4, which is what I'm used to. A little bit of a breakaway attempt coming through over on this west side. We've got, uh, who have we got coming through here? Dr. Cheesecake coming through. Uh, and, and looking to break through. So going to be, be uh, the 2v1 key choice going up against here. Uh, obviously, he's got Bry nearby, uh, but uh, it wasn't enough to hold it down. So let's check back in on our build. So indeed, our fusion is underway. Uh, almost on light here. So 7 minutes 50, and it's about... It's coming up. So a little bit over 8 minutes. So not a bad timing at all. Uh, and then well, let's check in on the other guys because I always like to compare where am I up against. Now, obviously, my uh, rating is, is significantly higher than these guys. We've got uh, a 17 over here. Uh, and then we've got 21 for ring blades. Black, Black, ring, well, Black King is uh, 23, so it's, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. Obviously, idiot. He is, uh, well, let's... Look, I, I don't want to call anybody an idiot here, but... Um, he's a bit of an idiot. He's a bit of an idiot. Anyway, uh, so we're all up and running here. Every, everything is going well. And at, at this point, the front line is holding, right? Like, if, if we take a look from the, the perspective, and I, I guess I should also provide a little bit of a, an explanation here. Was that a commander going down? Did Choice just lose his comm? Choice, where's your comm, bro? Choice lost his comm. Damn, dude. I didn't even realize Choice lost his commander that early. Uh, so... One of the things that, that you're always going to have to assess as a backline player, once you get better, because early on in, in when, you're, when you're still young and inexperienced in, in this game, or at least that's what I've found, you don't, you don't really have the ability to keep track of things. And even if you can keep track, you don't really know what, you, what the response should be. Uh, so I'm always looking. Now I've, I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm trying to assess. And now we can see the bombers are coming through. It gets pinged. Look here, friendly player says. So straight away, we've got to react to that because we don't have any air. Our, 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 uh, our pink player said he's going to go air after he goes bots. So straight away, we begin throwing down sentries. Come on, Drongo. Get it together, mate. Not sentries. We need... Ba back in TA, they used to be called defenders or pulverizers. Uh, but uh, there we go. There we go. The nettles. Uh, and so w we want to just throw those down and just make sure that we're safe because, I mean, worst case scenario, some of these bombers do get through uh, and we're, we're going to be in a bit of trouble. But fortunately, Black Ring... Uh, is it Black Ring? Black King. We've got Ring Blades and Black King. That's that's going to get me, I tell you what. Uh, 
yeah, for, fortunately, there was some AA back here. And look at this. Dr. Cheesecake actually just throwing down AA all over the shop. I'm loving it. Thank you, Dr. Cheesecake. Keeping me safe and keeping me, keeping me very happy with all this cheesecake in my tummy. Speaking of which, I love cheesecake. It's, it's probably, it's arguably, no, it is objectively the best cake. Name a cake that's better than cheesecake. Mud cake doesn't count. It's too rich. You can't eat a lot of it. But cheesecake, it's so versatile. Think about it. I, do, do you want like your, your fruit cheesecake? With strawberry, raspberries, that's my favorite. I, I love the blueberry raspberry cake. Uh, blueberry, blue, oh my god, blueberry cheesecake. Uh, but th then you can do things like the caramel cheesecake or the lemon. Oh my god, lemon cheesecake. I totally forgot about lemon cheesecake. Oh, okay, yeah, now we're talking. Anyway, anyway, we'll, we'll forget about the cheesecake and, and focus more on the cheese that's about to be happening up here. Because uh, we've got the aphis, it's coming down. How long have we got until about a minute? Obviously, we're pretty low on the, uh, pretty low on the metal. Now, this is an example of why it's important to follow build orders or important to follow, um, I guess, game plans uh, because you can start to see the difference between these build orders as they evolve uh, where you compare something like this where our Aphis is going to be coming up 12 minutes uh, and compare that to the enemy's fastest Aphis. And we do have someone rushing an Aphis over here, uh, but it's going to be, I, I think it works out to be about 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, and so th that's just the, the difference that you can get where you've got that extra refinement. So fortunately, we've, we've got that on our side. Uh, and we're going to be looking to exploit that here. See a whole bunch more units coming in. It looks like it's uh, it's going to be the bombers. I, I, I have no idea how to do this, but I absolutely love it. I, 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 I've not seen this before. So I haven't used air yet. My plan is to eventually start using air. Because obviously it's uh, pretty good. We actually already have a Nighthawk out, which is the, uh, the tier 2. The tier 2 fighter. And you can see some crazy missiles going out here. He's actually running along in front. So a little bit of a... I don't know if, if that's a mistake or if you can micro, but look at this. Look at this, uh, this forecasting, this pre-shadowing. And I, when they increase in altitude, it looks like they do lose speed as well. So bombs come down, unfortunately. Uh, so I think we, we reclaimed all of our stuff. Uh, but anyway, we're online. Uh, 11.55. Yeah, we're well and truly online. That must have been... That, that was a pretty early one. 11.30. And you can see the classic Drongo reaction time coming in right now. All the all the air is dead. And I'm like, oh, quick, throw down the nettles, guys. Uh, no, that, it, it doesn't go like that, Drongo. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's check in over on the other side. Uh, so Aphis has just begun. Uh, I say just begun, but it, it's 15% through. So not not too bad coming through from, uh, from Ring Blades. But uh, obviously, we're, we're still a little bit ahead. And now begins our preparation for uh, my favorite thing, obviously, the T3 gantry. So any any game I can get away with this, I want to be going for it. And I think that's something that I'm still learning it when it comes to Beyond All Reason, is that you can't always just go for a gantry. When you consider the cost of the gantry. So here, as an example, I'm stacking up a lot of, of metal. Uh, and I could... I could just be producing a bot lab right now. I could just, bam, have a bot lab ready to go right now. So let, let's say like 1248, 1250, call it, call it 1250. I could have that bot lab up and ready to go. But look how much longer it's going to take because now for me to get the metal to drop down this gantry, I'm going to have to reclaim my fusion. And obviously if I'm reclaiming my fusion, that means that my uh, my nanos aren't, aren't working uh, on producing units from, from here. Obviously I'd, I'd probably still want to reclaim my fusion just because that metal's kind of, I wouldn't say it's useless, uh, but it's obviously nowhere near as efficient and I'd rather just pull it out and throw it in, in something like units or gantry uh, and, and try and get that up uh, as quickly as possible. And we can see that Ringblades is calling out, you know, Aphis almost online. He's got about a minute to go, so not too, not too bad there for him. Actually, pretty decent timing. Should be about uh, 14 minutes as long as he's got the metal for it. And judging by the rate of decay, he should probably have the metal for it. Uh, I'd, I'd have to learn the exact math on it, but you can see now it, it's been almost a minute uh, that has gone by. Uh, and a minute is a long time when it comes to games like this, right? Like, think about in a minute how far tanks from here can get to. Like, they can easily get back here and, and rain on your parade. And the problem with, with my base, one of these one of these nanos takes a hit, I'm okay. Two of them takes a hit, I'm dead. Because they all chain react. Uh, and then, you know, once you've lost all, all of that production, you really lose out on a lot of uh, a, a lot of potential. But I, I kind of realize, I'm like, oh, I'm playing against Choice. I got to be careful because Choice is... I, I wouldn't say Choice has been picking on me at all, uh, but he's definitely been... Uh, he's been doing... He, he's been... He's been challenging me, let's just say that. And I'm like, oh, you know, I got to be careful. Maybe he'll try and nuke me or something like that. And so this is a very late anti-nuke. I, I should have been dead from this. But fortunately, uh, we do get the anti-nuke up. And I will spoil it for you. We do not get nuked. So that is a that is a relief. So up at, 
up at the, until this point, all the fronts have kind of held, right? Like, no one's really let too much in. There hasn't been a lot of leaking. Like, we, we had that rascal that, that came... Rascal? Rascal? I don't know what to say. Ra if I say rascal, I'm English. If I say rascal, I'm, a, I'm American, and I, I really don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't say the word enough to know how Australians pronounce it. Uh, but, but all of the fronts have, have held. Uh, the integrity is maintained here. And so the question that I've got always when I'm doing this strategy is where is the weakest point? Now, I remembered earlier in the game that there was a little bit of a run by that came by. I'm always looking to try and, and, and exploit the edges of the map because you, you take a look here, right? You, you, if, you, if you run down here, you're running into one army, two armies, and the third one can easily come over. But if you come in sneaky all around the backside like this, then it makes it a lot harder to react. So that's what we're going to be looking to do here. Um, I, I did try something in another game where, where I did come in on this angle and it just did not work at all because, as you can see, there, there's so many wardens here. Uh, these used to be called gat guns, so I do apologize if I call them gat guns. They, they are just, they, they're almost, uh, I wouldn't say infamous, but they're, they're iconic uh, of the core in, in Total Annihilation, the gat gun. They're, they're, this, this intimidating sound that they had just... Deal, deal, deal. Oh, it was... It was, it was, it was terrible. Uh, you, you wouldn't want to go up against it, but I tell you what, when it goes, when you've got it on your side, it is powerful. It feels good. Uh, but yeah, at, at this point, it's a bit of a stalemate, right? And this is really good for me because when it comes to the stalemate, technically you don't have to break it. You don't have to try and break it because that, that's a, that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and get past that stalemate, see if I can find a, a potential uh, window. But uh, as I said, like when it comes to doing strategies like this, you don't have to take your foot off the pedal. Um, you only need to take your foot off the pedal if you want to put, uh, or if you want to defend to prevent damage from happening, or if you want to put damage on the enemy. And that's what I'm electing to do here. So I'm going to be trying my best to put out damage. And uh, let's just put it this way. I, I thought this attack got shut down, but it did a lot of damage. So one of the key things that we're going to be looking at uh, to judge the power of this is the economics in the top left hand or top right hand corner. Now, I wish I could make this widget bigger. Uh, I haven't found a way to do that just yet, but you can see that at the moment, we're sitting on slightly more metal. Well, actually, I take it back. It looks like it's changing with reclaim. Uh, in, in fact, it looks significantly lower. Uh, but you can see we're about 3k behind on energy. Uh, and that's a great indicator of tempo. Now, when it comes to build power, we can see that build power, they are, they're a little bit behind us. So we're going to go for our breakthrough. This is what we're doing. Now, behind this, keep in mind, we have reclaimed our gantry and we've started work on our second APHIS. Then we'll go into more... Um, We'll go into more uh, energy converters, and then we'll go into a third APHIS. And the idea is that we we are just going... We're, we're continuing on with the plan, essentially. So we we managed to break through, and this feels really, really good. Now I'm going up against Choice. He's a pretty damn good player. And he's going to use some very sneaky techniques to stop what I'm doing here. Most notably, these little guys. Ghosts. And these ghosts lock my units down for like 20 seconds. It's crazy. So he's able to catch up. Now keep in mind, these marauders are incredibly quick. So I think that with a combination, maybe Marauders aren't overpowered. Maybe it's just I haven't found people who have count can counter them yet. But I felt like Choice did a really good job, especially considering he didn't have a commander. You know, if he had a commander down here ready to degun these, this this would have been all over Red Rover. Uh, and I think naturally as I get better, I'm going to be coming up against stronger people who, who will know how to deal with this. But we're going to be following the story of our one single Marauder who comes through. This little guy causes so much pain. Now, remember back before... Uh, when it came to the, the difference between energy and metal. So they were up by about 100 uh, metal and they were up by about 3,000 energy. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to be microing out the wazoo. And the great thing about this is behind... Well, back at home, you don't need to worry about anything. You just issue your shift commands and then you just keep on doing your thing. Now, I don't think I actually issued a shift command for my next APHIS, uh, which is a little bit of a mistake from me. But this single marauder, the one that's going on the thumbnail right here, a single marauder, makes his way through the enemy base and just causes an absolute pain in the ass able to take out and, and damage so many people now granted i don't make i, I don't make any people quit through with this marauder but i tell you what it, it is just so difficult look, look at how much uh pressure i'm pulling off the front line because of this and this is going to open up the front line because now purple's going to have to chase through on the back line here uh, and we're going to come around over to the back of Idiot's base. And, well, as you guys will know, he's a bit of an idiot. Now, we are we, we do hit 9k, 9k, 9k. So I'm floating uh, metal. Well, you know, some people say that it, it's a mistake. I, I see it as I'm, I'm being very friendly to my, my teammates. I'm helping them out a little bit. Uh, so we, we've managed to make it through onto the back line. We've, we've got less than 1,000 health left. And now we're, we're under attack by Sheldon's. 
and we're trying our best to hold on for dear life and you can see we're microing th those shots as they come in we're making sure that we dodge them we want to stay out of range of this explosion when it comes in there we go we manage to survive it uh but it fortunately goes through and now we continue moving around and th this is the power of, of a strategy like this because even if one marauder gets through how do you how do you catch it how do you catch it it's so difficult unless you cut it off with a commander for a d gun it, it, it just or, or in in you know some cases you can see hounds do a really good job of of doing it but you've got to be prepared and you've got to be ready for it if you're not that thing will get past and it will start doing real damage to you and that's exactly what we do here so we're just we're, we're having a good time and you can see master toby in the chat saying oh indeed oh so we're, we're just causing pain causing havoc and now take a look at, at what is beginning to happen in that that top right hand corner uh i mean it, it, we're, we're starting to make a lead we're we're turning it around master toby even saying in the chat yeah yellow gg nice our little guy's got a star i don't know what that gives him oh there it actually tells us uh modifiers oh no that's i i don't know what that oh experience plus 75 percent health i get plus 75 percent health from experience that's pretty sick that's a lot so we've now destroyed master toby's base and this single marauder has just caused a huge trail of destruction over on this west side taking out uh advanced metal mines and unfortunately our hero of the day he can only be kited so much and you can see me trying my best to to kite away from the morty shots but unfortunately the blitzes get on top of me and that's all she wrote for my little guy but guess what we have managed to cause so much trauma for the enemy team now uh we've got purple's units that are a little bit out of this out of position I wish I could have got back here, but Purple did a really good job. Uh, to be honest, I think I probably could have looped back around and, and managed to, to take him out. Uh, if I'd gotten in here, it would have been absolutely disastrous for him. But let's take a look back over at my base, because now we've finished doing that. we got the third Aphis going down, and we're going to begin doing the air transition. This is a really important thing that you've got to do. I still don't know the exact timing on it. Uh, to be honest, I'm thinking like directly after second Aphis is probably the best time to go into the air, but ideally what i look to do is get out about five basic construction uh, aircraft these guys are going to be responsible for building my uh oh, that's not my basic uh, construction these guys are my basic construction so these guys are going to be responsible for building construction turrets and then you're just going to go for advanced aircraft as well now i, I think ideally you want to start off with maybe about five advanced aircraft you don't want to go crazy on them initially but there will become a point in the game where you get up to like 200 of them just because having that build power ready to go anywhere is very very strong it means that you're quite flexible with it but i think when you're going for a compact base like we are it really makes sense to be going with construction turrets through the early game so i don't know exactly what the timing is to change over so maybe somewhere around the 50k energy mark might be the best time to you know stop making construction turrets and just simply rely on um you know ad ad on the advanced construction units but fr from that you can see that we we've managed to pull out a relatively small lead because of that and we've we've done damage it wasn't significant damage i don't think it definitely wasn't comparable to say the the, the game even though we lost that game the, the one that i was demonstrating on supreme straight that was a lot of damage that we did but still here we had that one hero marauder uh that was uh that was carrying it for us in the early game but another thing that i'm going to be showing you is a pretty cool technique that you can use in the late game especially if you're from the carry position it is i guess <laughs> I guess the first thing I thought when I when I saw it was like, I'm surfing the web or, or something like that, because it, it's very much about that. And I'll, I'll kind of leave that ominous description to you. I mean, you know what? You probably see it on the on the thumbnail already. I don't, I don't know what our thumbnail is going to be yet. I still haven't decided. So I, I talk about it like I, I know what it is, but I really don't. But uh, we, we can see a little bit of a counterattack now going to be coming over on this west side. So we've got two players that have actually gone into uh, Marauders. I, I think all that's happened uh, is that they've just rezzed the Marauders uh so they've now got the marauders that i once used so uh little i guess this is probably one of the downsides of going for this marauder attack if it does fail you give your enemy a whole bunch of marauders uh because i think at the end of the day it's just energy right that it takes to uh to resurrect things so now pretty strong push coming in dr cheesecake standing by ready to go and th this is the problem right you've got to be so careful when you're coming in i always like to split my units up into like into lines because you can see he needs to get the digger oh he's got a comp bomb he throws down the comp bomb it's massive he takes out a huge portion of the army but still a lot gets through he sacrifices the commander perfect timing right there from the cheese man uh that was beautifully done that was that was very very nice that, that was cheese that we watched yeah yeah must have been 
Uh, very, very well done. So he controlled D, so he's still got the commander wreckage, so he can look to, to uh, rebuild that or to, uh, to resurrect the, the commander. So he gets chased into the back line, and uh, as the requirement, uh, if ever, if ever your, one of your limbs becomes necrotic, you just got to cut it off. You just got to cut it off. And that's exactly what we do here. I, I, I don't think I probably... I don't think I would have been quick enough. And I don't actually know what happens with... Uh, w whether these units can go over the top of the... Uh, or around the sides. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw this down. Because I see the mammoth. And I'm like, is that mammoth just going to walk around my giant wall that I put down? Oh, yeah. All right. It is too. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, that's... But the welder does. Th th these used to call be called uh, Zeus's. Zeus's. Uh, I don't I don't know what the plural of Zeus is. Uh, so we we throw down a little bit of a reactive gantry right now. Uh, the idea is that uh, obviously we're getting pushed over on this west side. So I said, oh gosh, I tell you what, we we got to get some units out to defend that. But once again, it's the, it's the classic case of well, you know, now that the threat has gone, just get rid of it. Just just get rid of the gantry. You don't need it anymore. And you can see I'm pumping out Razorbacks here. I don't need these anymore. Uh, so I, I think I, I I end up taking two of them. And we'll check in back over on the front side. Uh, uh, let's do a little bit of a, a recap on the economy. So you can see at the moment, our team in the north is actually doing pretty well on uh, on metal. In fact, it's hard to tell on metal because with reclaim, it just kind of skews it so badly. And I guess, I guess the re reality is, is with reclaim, like if, if you're on top of a big reclaim field out here, that, that's, that's a genuine income, right? Whereas... You know, it's obviously distinguished from advanced energy converters or or the the uh, the metal extractors. But let's check in over with the back lines and see how they're doing. So we've got Strata, who's now adding in that second Aphis. Uh, we've got over here, we've got Ring Blades, who's adding in his third Aphis. He's just completed and now going to begin producing Titans. Oh my lord, I tell you what, this is like cardinal sin number one of uh, playing Armada don't make titans just just ask your neighbor just be like hey man can i just grab a bot quickly and and just put down a gantry or if you've got to go go up from tier one to tier two just throw down the t2 lab reclaim it after you've got your advanced bot and then just do it because the juggernaut is just 57 times better i've done the math it's 57 times better uh black king he has two aphises so going pretty well how's idiot doing idiot not yet up to an aphis but what we wouldn't really expect much more from him is, to be honest, he's not doing too badly with 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 you know the hand that he's been given here. So let's check in, let's check in on our back line because uh, well our guy just lost his aphis. I like I like this. I like the fact. Look at how far away he builds these. I, I don't think he realizes that when this aphis blows, it's gonna kill everything. This thing's like a nuke going off, man. Just stick them together. That's all right. Look, wow, friendly player really going for like the whole. He, like, he he looks like a hunting badger right now. He doesn't care about the base design. I mean, he put all the wind turbines together, but that, that's essentially it. Uh, then we've obviously got... Uh, we, we've got Dr. Cheesecake here, who, who's going pretty ham, throwing down the first of the Aphises. Uh, and then we're up to... We're going for our sixth Aphis right now. Uh, things are slowly getting better for us. And then over on the east, we've got the Kingdom on the back line, who is adding in his... Or he's got his first Aphis in. So when it comes to the front lines, though... Let's check in with uh, with how our South team is doing. So they've got a pretty well-established front line down here, and they're beginning to push forward as well. We see a whole bunch of welders beginning to make their way north. And at the same time, over towards the east side, we've got some pyros or fiends that are about to begin coming through. Now, I, I learned something interesting today about the fiend. That was actually from choice. Uh, so apparently when the fiend dies, uh, it doesn't leave a wreckage behind, which means that your enemy can't reclaim it. So they're really good for pushing in and raiding. So let's, let's have a look and see. Yeah. I Wait. Fiend debris. I, I guess it does leave debris. I, m maybe I misunderstood. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I, I don't know ex exactly, but... Uh, well, I, I don't actually know how the reclaim mechanic... Well, I know how the reclaim mechanic works. I don't know how the res uh, mechanic works. Maybe you can only res from the big ones and you can't res the little ones like that. So maybe that's what he was talking about. So we're going to push out now with our Razorbacks right into some Starlights, which is obviously not a, uh, not a good fight to be taking. These guys do a lot of damage. And, uh, yeah, they make short work of us. And you can see he's got plenty of Starlights that are coming out. I love these units. They're really, really strong. Uh, part, part of, one of the reasons that I love playing Arm is because of the Sharpshooters and the Starlights. They are just... They're incredibly strong. So, the front line on the south is looking really good. We're starting to look a little bit weak over towards that east side. Let's take a look over towards the north and see how it's looking. How's the, how's the defense going in? Let's get that player view on. So, the defense is definitely looking a little bit shaky right now. Uh, so we can see that uh, 
Alej is doing a pretty good job of holding it down on this middle part, but he, I feel like he, there's a flank potential going to be coming in, so we got to help him out. And that's exactly what we look to do. So we throw down a whole bunch of bot labs here, and all we're going to be doing is just spamming it out. So if we take a look here, you'll see that we've got uh, five pawns and then one crossbow that's going to be coming out. Uh, and that, that's going to be helping the front line. And the idea with this is that we just want to be pushing onto the front because if they don't pay attention to that, we're going to get onto the back line eventually. And then in the event that we... Uh, if we don't do that, then the same thing is going to happen to us. So we want to make sure that we're always just... It's basically like a check. We're just always constantly checking them and being like, hey man, just checking. You still got units here? You still got units here? Because it really doesn't cost us a lot of resources to do that. I mean, at, at this point in the game, if we take a look at the, the resources that I'm generating, so I'm generating 24k energy. It's not really taking much energy uh, to, to do something like that. Now, the, the trick with that is that you always want to add in a secondary unit to complement this. You don't want to just be throwing this down. So for me, my, my unit of choice is the Advanced Bot Lab. Specifically, it's the Sharpshooter. I love this unit, and it just pairs so well together. So you basically... You, you put all of these guys on move, the pawns, and then you tell the sharpshooters to uh, to just attack move. And or, I think it's technically called fight in uh, Beyond All Reason. But a little bit of an attack coming through. Over on this west side, we see the, the bulls making their way, leading the charge. Having a little bit of trouble, though. Sumo's doing a, a decent job on the defense. Actually, they're called mammoths, aren't they? They're called <laughs> Sumo. See, this is where the TA... I, I don't think I'll ever let the TA go, man. The, the TA is way too strong in me. But we do have the Titan on the field. A little bit of a pause there and an unpause. Oh, I tell you right now, that was, a, that was a very long pause. I think it was about 10 minutes, that pause. Somebody disconnected and we were waiting to... Wait, we were waiting for it. And, uh, yeah, so at, at this point, every, everything is... Uh, I mean, it, it looks like it's going well, right? But, I mean, we're, we're losing out on this Western Front significantly. There's a bit of a push coming back over on their Western Front. But, I mean, they're holding it down pretty well. The, the Pulsar's back here. they got a line of bulls. Nothing's really getting through that unless any nothing short of a juggernaut's getting through that. But at the same time, over towards that the north side, you, you see the same story there. So now the fight comes towards the center. Now, fortunately, for false he's got plenty of gunslingers here, and these guys excel at taking out the pawns, and we're just kind of pumping up his veterancy at the at the moment. I just realized like we're, we're just giving him more range, we're giving him more stats. Uh, so it's it's probably not the best just like throwing pawns down like that. So Hopefully those sharpshooters are going to be out soon. We can see there they are making their way downtown. So we're, we're just going to be looking to spam out these. I think we, we get up to some ridiculous number with our sharpshooters. So it, it works out. I, I think we got up to like 70 sharpshooters, uh, which, which are just crazy. I feel like they're such a great unit uh, and so difficult to deal with. I mean, if you've if you got bombers or if you've got something fast, then definitely. But they, they can be very well covered. You know, you, you throw a couple of uh, the, the battle mechs in there and that, they will cover very effectively for you. All right, well, it looks like the Titan's coming through. Uh, this is going to need to be intercepted here by a commander. Normally the best way to deal with it. Keep in mind that the Titan doesn't have that nuclear explosion when it when it blows up. Uh, so it means that you can very easily degun it from the commander. So cloak, walk up, degun that bad boy. And you don't have to worry about any ramifications. It's, uh, makes it makes life very easy. We can see Dr. Cheesecake starting to move into position here. A couple of, uh, of Titans there. So he wants to get nice and close. And even the gunship's going to be coming in to help out. At the same time, the push towards the middle is still quite strong. Looks like the first of the sharpshooters are making their way down. We can see that long line of them. It's starting to look good. And the commander is moving forward. Now, I I'm suspecting he's probably got radar. So he'll be very aware, very cognizant, because once you when you see that slow-moving dot coming towards you, you're going to be re very, very careful. Razorback making the way through. Let's check in with Choice. I want to see how Choice is doing down here. He's got the single Aphos. He's just spamming out. Is this ticks? What is this? Yeah, tick spam. Whole bunch of ticks just being spammed out right now. A lot of air looking to come up the rear as well. No, he's just on a patrol route at the moment. But still pushing through. The tick flood is happening. Ticks are incredibly uh, potent when it comes to this. I'm curious, what, what are your thoughts on tick versus pawn? Because I, I really like the pawns, but maybe ticks are just better because they're, they're faster and they, they're still going to distract. And you probably get a little bit more of them through, which means that there's more targets for your enemy to have to hit. So maybe ticks are better in that regard because you're just kind of looking for some sort of fodder. Uh, that, that's pretty much it. Dr. Cheesecake moving forward, looking for the D-gun. He's got to be careful of those battle mechs as well. Not going to be able to find it just yet. Holding on for dear life. Over towards that east side. A bit of a push coming up. We've got the ambassadors coming out. These guys used to be called diplomats in TA. Uh, these guys do a hell of a lot of damage. And you can see them just melting away on that front line. Very accurate as well. But now it looks like 
We've got the Titan that's going to be moving over towards the east. He says, I can't come through here. I know that there's a commander. But instead, we see the Kepler. I, I don't actually know how much or what these Keplers do, apart from just die and explode like that. Uh, I, I know that they stop the LOL cannon, aka um, the, the Ballista. Or uh, it, it, I, I just know that by the TA names, the Intimidator, the Buzzsaw, the Vulcan. Uh, the, these long-range plasma cannons, essentially. But this is a lot of damage being done right here. I didn't realize that uh, Ringblades was pushing forward like this. And we can see that even Choice is, like, signaling, like, hey, come through this way. This is really, really good uh, to come through here. He's going to clear this out and create a huge hole. And now the ticks are going to be able to run up to that top side. But at the same time, on the front, we're pushing forward. And our snipers are finally making towards the front line. This is where it starts to get hard to deal with all these ticks, right? Because we need something to, to take out the ticks. And the snipers are getting caught off. And you can see them actually with their, their laser sights. Now behind this, we're still spamming out economy. And that's the thing. We're still not taking our foot off the pedal. We're, we're still scaling. And that's the most important thing. A lot of people will just say, okay, five Aphises, that's enough for me. We got the D-guns coming out though. Watch out. Alej. Uh, is it Alej or Alex? I, I, I feel like it's not Alex. So it's going to be Ale? Ale? I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just going to go with Alej. Alej. Uh, manages to pull off the D-Gun, doesn't die, but now he's going to have to deal with the Thor. Uh, so might need to cloak and come back. I reckon he can take I reckon he can take it. Go on. Get up there, son. So the Thor now going to be looking to put on the pressure. And we're making a breakthrough. Remember, we talked about before the, the frontline check. Well, this, this is what we've got. Uh, so all, all of these Peewees are going to be moving... All, all of the... Uh, what are they called? The pawns moving through. Uh, and at the same time... We've got those snipers on the back line. Have a look at how many snipers we've got right now. We've got 45 snipers out streaming across the field. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage that's coming out. And that allows you to clear up this back line very effectively because all that fodder is going to be taking up their shots. And uh, and the, the sharpshooter is just going to be able to eat up that back line. You can see just how much damage they're doing, taking out all those tigers. So really nice push. And now big attack coming in from, Bl from Black Ring. Bomber attack over on the west. Now, we've got plenty of anti-air over here. At least, I hope we've got plenty of anti-air. You can see me throwing down all the anti-air. And I realize I've got a cover at the back. We're, we're throwing down some long shots. He's got a whole bunch of T1s. Get some nice little bombing run in. But we're firing off like an absolute madman. Throwing down some arbalists here. Looking to defend against this attack. All of the fighters towards the front got taken out. And you can see just how much damage has been done there to the base of friendly player. A very friendly player. Look at, look at how many, look at how much, gosh, poor guy. At least the Aphises are still alive. You know, I, I was, I wouldn't say I was mocking him earlier, but I, I was pointing out the fact that Aphis is that far apart. Well, it's, uh, it's not going to save anything, but it looks like they saved the day here. So pretty well held there by friendly player. Uh, and we managed to keep the integrity of our base uh, well done. Now, at this point, this is where it starts to get a little bit crazy. So have a look at, at the resources. Take a look in the top right-hand corner of your screen. You can see that we've got 61k energy and 1.1 metal for the South team. And we've got 1.5k metal and 99k energy. Now have a look at my energy and my metal. I am half of my team's energy. I am, what is that, two thirds? Oh, not two thirds, sorry, uh, two fifths of my energy's metal. So 40% of the team's metal, 50% of the team's energy. That's because I've kept scaling. That's because I've kept making APHIS. I've kept making advanced energy converters and if there's one thing that you've got to make sure that you do throughout the game it's add in these bad boys right here advanced construction aircraft you can see that we're up to 141 because you're going to be able to leverage these throughout the game that you're you're going to be building economy with them early and then you can decide how you want to use them once the game starts getting later so we're 37 minutes 37 minutes into the game this is where it starts to get a little bit late game so now we start thinking okay what are we going to do hold on a minute i know what we're going to do we're going to have a baby. No, we're not, we're not going to have a baby. Uh, but we are going to be having a Ragnarok. Uh, so this Ragnarok will take us 90 seconds to complete. Now, think about it from the perspective of if, if you're only using construction turrets, it's just going to take so long and you're going to be very restricted on where you can put it. You know, e even if I put it down here, it's not going to work. Because what, there, there's a very special reason why I'm building this Ragnarok in this position. Some games I'll ask my allies, hey, can you can you give me a core construction unit? Because I would like to make juggernauts. But I don't do that this game. And there's a very special reason why that is. This right here. This is my secret weapon. Now, the, the key here is I need this to stay alive. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Kepler. Well, the, sorry, the, the Keeper, not the Kepler. 
we need this keeper to stay alive because we are going to be bouncing our Ragnarok off the top down upon this keeper into the back line. And it, so when it, when it, the uh, bullets, when, when the, uh, the plasma from the Ragnarok hit the keeper, the shield, it doesn't absorb it, it, it bounces off. And you can manipulate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I attack behind. And what that's going to do is the bullets are going to land on the top and then they're going to bounce off. Uh, and that allows me to extend the range of my Ragnarok out significantly. Um, so we can see right here that my Ragnarok range just extends to the front of the of the bases of the frontline players. But ladies and gentlemen, the Ragnarok is almost online. Five seconds to go. Let's, uh, let's, let's get a nice little picture right here. The key to the late game, the Ragnarok is online. And now we're going to start skipping into the enemy base like stones on a pond all the way down to the back line, baby. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? From the safety, I'm surfing the web. There you go. I, I, I feel like it's a, a Simpsons reference and now all their back lines are getting destroyed. Uh, fortunately, they do, they do already have some uh, keepers on the back line. So this should be relatively safe, he says, as part of the, uh, the back line goes down. But as you can see, it just keeps getting deflected. And we, we're just very happy to do this because th there's so much range in where these shots might land. Uh, they, may be, they bounce off on different trajectories because it's all rendered, well, not rendered, but uh, simulated in real time. So you, you never know exactly where those shots are going to be going. Uh, but we, we hit we hit, we hit an Aphis right there, I think it was. And uh, we, we just keep pumping. And at, at this point, it is, it is very much the case that the game is over. Uh, so we have managed to scale. We've managed to keep this, the middle alive through our flood of units. And we've managed to get to the point where we have so many construction units. And we've got we're up to 200 advanced construction aircraft now. That we don't really need to worry um, or, uh, about the, the, the rest of the game. Uh, we're in a really good spot. When it comes to the economy, as you can see, we're sitting on 53k. Uh, 53k energy. You can't really rely on the metal because we're using all of our energy in the Ragnarok. And the Ragnarok is very loud. I do apologize. I'm just, I'm just looking at my levels now. I'm like, damn, that is that is one loud boy. And yeah, so that, that's essentially it. When it comes to finishing off this game, there's not much else than that. That That's that's pretty much it. There, there, I guess there's a couple of different ways you can finish a game. Ragnarok is probably the easiest. It, do, it doesn't always work. That's one thing to note. But it works also. It, it's, it's a pull factor. And it, it forces the enemy into an attack on you. And think about it, typically they want to go for like an air attack on this. Uh, now there's nothing here to repair it, but even if they take it down, I'm just going to bring in my 200 construction aircraft and say, can you can you come back in in a minute and I'll have another one for you? I've got all of these anti-air ready to go. If anybody even tries to make a step, you can see we've got plenty of them down here. We've got 10 of them ready to fire and they're all banked up with their AOE shots. At least I think they've got AOE shots. But Ragnaroks on top of a hill this guy, I mean, he's just so beautiful, isn't he? He's just so beautiful. Anyway, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I, don't need to, I don't need to show you the rest of the game. You can imagine what happens. I mean, you, you probably like me to show you the rest of the game. Maybe, maybe I'll show you the rest of the game, you know, because I'm sure there's going to be people saying, no, Drongo, we did want you to show us the rest of the game. And the bombing attempt was made. And I, I, I pull on my uh, construction up there because I'm not sure how many, uh, I'm not sure how many anti-air units he's got. But overall, overall, uh, this game went went relatively well just simply because our front line held, right? Like, our front line didn't fail, and that just allowed me time to scale. Uh, and I didn't intend to rhyme that, but uh, there you go. And over on the east side, they managed to push through. You can see Choice saying that he can't reach the back. Oh, Choice, but I can. I can, Choice. Uh, but he, he's got enough keepers now that he, he should be able to survive. Apparently, you need seven keepers to sustain through a... Uh, to sustain through a, uh, a lull cannon. And you can see here, I'm going to try and hit him. But I, I realize that he's also got... Because you can you can see the shots and look how far they extend off. Extending off the stratosphere right there. Uh, and, and so the likelihood that I'm going to be able to skip across here and then land on this to take them out is, is very, very low. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of like raining it down at this point. Definitely look at the angles that it comes in on. It feels so good having having these units in the late game. Oh, there you go. So un unless you get a direct hit, I don't think it absorbs the, the shield or the damage. 
You can see that the attack's coming through. 100%. I think he can reach back. Should have put... <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't, you don't always... Uh, you don't you don't get to see the, the enemy chat when you're playing. Uh, but it's always fun to watch the replay and see. So I think overall we made a pretty good contribution this game. Uh, it, it all came down to that single Marauder in the beginning. And behind this, of course, once we've we've thrown down the low cannon, now it's back to scaling. Uh, so that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll take a look at the statistics in the end. So we had 50 million enemy energy produced uh, compared to the nearest enemy, which was 18 million. Nearest ally, which was 15 million. Uh, 683k metal uh, compared to the nearest ally, 239 and 320k for ring blades. Uh, so not doing too bad there. So the, the boom was pretty went pretty well when it comes to the uh, damage efficiency. Looks like we did relatively well on that as well. So overall, I feel like this game has, has gone well. Uh, but if you've got any tips for me, please leave them down in the comments. If you've got any feedback for me for the, the type of video that I've done here, because this is something new. I don't normally do these types of videos. Please let me know. Uh, and of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.